Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on finding exponential functions. And yes, we are entering a new chapter, but in some ways this chapter is not new at all, because hopefully you're sitting there thinking, wait a minute, exponential, logistic, and logarithmic functions? Well, I studied exponential and logarithmic functions a bit in Algebra 2, and even perhaps somewhat in, in Algebra 1. Uh, so this should not seem totally brand new to you, but we certainly are going to uh, not only refresh your memory, but also build on that, that knowledge. So, quick point, th these are extremely useful functions in the real world and in science, and unfortunately the math curriculum and we math teachers are sometimes guilty on not spending enough time on, on that. Um, but exponential and or logistic functions are uh, definitely used in these uh, real world phenomena, uh, modeling population growth, uh, calculating interest earned on money in a bank, um, figuring out how fast rumors or other information spreads, um, the heating or cooling of objects, uh, that the temperature behaves in an exponential fashion. Um, logarithmic functions, also a lot of the scales used for measuring real world phenomena such as the sound, um, sound intensity, the decibel scale is logarithmic. Uh, the Richter scale for measuring earthquakes, the astronomical scale for brightness of stars, the, the pH scale for measuring acidity. Um, those are all logarithmic scales, so I encourage you to be on the lookout for exponential and logarithmic functions in your other classes. <clears throat> Definitely ask those teachers and ask me about, uh, about firming up those connections when you see them. All right, uh, right off the bat. I need you to turn to what's page 8 in the current version of our textbook as of this recording. Please turn to page 8 and make sure you are solid in your properties of exponents. And even if you look at them now and you say, yeah, I think I got that, but, but in the course of doing your assignments, if you find that this stuff is screwing you up, please have the courage to come and ask questions and get this sorted out because this is the type of stuff that, that kills students on this topic. Um, things like when you're supposed to be adding the exponents, but instead you accidentally multiply them. You've got to get those two straight. Those, that's a common error. Um, okay, check all those out. Make sure you're good on them. Ask if you're not. Note some of the uh, little side notes in the margins of the book. Look at some of the, you know, here's an example of a really common error. Um, Notice how when you have negative exponents, how they move between numerator and denominator. And again, ask questions if you are at all shaky on your exponential properties. Uh, one more thing before we jump into an example. Uh, I find a lot of students aren't clear on the difference between an exponential function and a power function. So if I write two, uh, y equals two to the x power, and then I write y equals x to the two power, well, one of those is exponential, and the other is a power function. Uh, the one in which we said x to the 2 power, uh, notice that the variable is down here in the base, and a constant is in the exponent. So when the variable is in the base, that's a power function. Okay, so our quadratics, our, our cubics, our quartic functions, those are all power functions. Whereas, um, again, over here we have a similar structure. There's a base and an exponent. But when it's a variable and an exponent and a constant in the base, that is called exponential. All right, so I'll make sure you get those terms straight. We are dealing with exponential functions today. And not only can you have a base raised to a, a variable, a constant base raised, raised to a variable exponent, but you can also have a coefficient in front. So here's our formal definition of exponential function. And one of the um, key words I need to make sure you notice is that exponential functions can be written in this form. They may not initially show up in the form of a times b to the x, but as long as they can be rewritten into the form of some constant a times another constant b to the x power, we call it exponential. Now, there are some other subtleties to this definition, such as um, all this stuff here. I'm going to wait for class to discuss the significance of that, because that, that's a little too subtle to try to cover in a video. But let's run with this definition for now, a times b to the x. You're going to be asked in, in an assignment, as well as on a test, uh, to find the exponential function that passes through two given points. 
Now, let me pull up a, a GeoGebra construction here and just show you that if I have two points on an XY plane, it doesn't matter where those points are for the most part, um, I can find an exponential function that goes through them. Um, notice I can have an exponential function that increases um, from going from left to right, or I can have an exponential function that decreases going from left to right. Um, notice that it can uh, increase or decrease real quickly, um, or it can take its time increasing or decreasing as we go from left to right. Um, I can also have, a, uh, have, have negative exponential functions that are in the third and fourth quadrant, as you see right here. I'll, I'll admit, that's not going to come up quite as often. We're mostly going to deal with exponential functions in the first and second quadrant, either increasing, like you see now, or decreasing but technically they can be in the third and fourth quadrant. All right, so our job is to uh, figure out algebraically how to find the equation that goes through two given points. So, let's uh, uh, make up some points here. How about, let's say it goes through the points three, seven, and nine, two. And you're gonna hear me start off with a familiar request. You know me by now. Let's make a reasonable sketch. And those who, who decide not to listen to me on this, and you make a goofy error and you can't catch it, I'm going to throw it in your face and say, guess what? If you had made a reasonable sketch, you wouldn't have found it. So let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, let's look at the x values, 3 and 9. Well, how about I mark off, I'll mark off three little intervals there, and I'll say that's 3, 6, and 9. I don't, I don't really care about every single integer there. Um, let's look at the y values. Uh, 7 and 2. That's going to help me kind of get a sense of scale here, that I don't need to go all the way up to 100 up, up at the top of that axis. Uh, so how about I just go, let's see, I'll divide it several times, and I'll make that 2, 4, 6, 8. There we go. All right, uh, so two points, 3, 7. Now, if you're one of those who likes to use graph paper, by all means, bust out the graph paper and use it. That's totally fine with me. But I'm also saying, I don't, I don't need super precision here. I just want a reasonable sketch. All right, so I can see right off the bat now, just by drawing those two points, that I'm going to have a decreasing graph. And uh, you may have noticed when I had the GeoGebra construction up that all those graphs were asymptotic to the x-axis. So if I were to keep going, it would be asymptotic to the x-axis. I'm not going to focus on that for right now. I don't insist on it for this type of problem. But I can see that this is going to go up, and it's going to cross the y-axis at some value bigger than 8. Again, I'm not claiming this is super precise, but, but I expect some value up here, some y-intercept bigger than 8. All right, let's get into the algebra here. We said the definition of uh, an exponential function is that it can be written in the form of a times b to the x. So that's exactly what we're going to start with. And let's look at that first point, 3, 7. Be very careful in making sure you, you observe which one is the x value and which is the y value. So I see a lot of students just carelessly get these uh, uh, flip-flopped. So 3 is the x, 7 is the y, so I'll write 7 equals a times b to the 3 power. Again, please make sure you don't get these two switched. See, a lot of students do that over the years. All right, I'm going to do the same thing with the other point. But I'm going to pause for a minute and see that I would like to write that other equation right above this first one. And I'll show you why in just a moment. But I would like to write the equation for this point above my first equation. So I'm going to write 2 equals a times b to the ninth. Now, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't really, you don't have to write this one above, but let me tell you why I did. I like to have this exponent be larger than this exponent. So I always write my equations such that the, the one on top has the larger exponent. In this case, the 9 is bigger than the 3. Now, again, I repeat, it would work just fine if you did it the other way. And in fact, I might even encourage you to see what happens if you write the other one on top. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take these two equations and I'm going to merge them into one. Uh, if this number equals this number, and this number equals this number, 
Doesn't it make sense that I could just turn these two into a fraction? So make sure you pause, kind of study this, make sure you, you, you agree with what I'm doing, and, and, and seek clarification if not. But I'm going to say again, that if this up here equals this, in this case the numerators are equal, and then these denominators are equal, then those two fractions, this entire fraction must equal this entire fraction. All right, again, please see, I hope that was clear, but if it wasn't, please see clarification, because that's a big point right there. All right, the reason I'm doing that is because now I see that the a's will go away, that a over a reduces to one, right? So I can effectively cancel them out. And remember your exponential rules. It's not going to be 9 divided by 3. It's going to be 9 minus 3. Again, make sure your exponential properties are solid here. We're going to get b to the 9 minus 3, or 6 power on the right. And on the left, I'll just have the fraction of 2 sevenths. Now, if I want to solve for b, it's not too hard. Uh, and some of you may be thinking, OK, I'm going to take the 6th root of both sides. And I'll say, OK, you could do that. I think you'll find a lot of math people are, are more in preference of the rational exponent. So even though you could take the sixth root of both sides, applying a rational exponent, also known as a fractional exponent, does the same thing. It's, that's exactly the same thing as taking the sixth root, but um, a lot of math people feel like this more clearly shows us that. And I multiply those two exponents, which are exponential properties to also do, but multiply these two numbers that they will give us 1, right? So on the right side, I get b to the 1 power now, which is what I wanted. I wanted b by itself. On the left side, I've got 2 sevenths times 1 to the 6th power. And at this point, I'll grab my calculator. And I've temporarily set my calculator to emulate a TI-83, because I really want to call attention to TI-83 users, that when you do 2 sevenths to the 1 6th power, Please be very careful and do parentheses around both the base and the exponent. And, and seek explanation from me if you're not clear why that's necessary. But if you forget either of those pairs of exponents, it's going to mess up your, your uh, results. So that is my B value. And I really ask you to stow that as B. And, and you'll see why in a moment. But hit the stow button and, and save that as, as B. And we see here that B is about 0.81156, but again, we'll stow it in our calculator. On paper, we'll say 0.8116. That's our approximate B value. Um, and if I want to go on and find out what A is, notice that I've got those two equations that I started with. I could either use this equation, um, really, before I cross out the A's. Let me get those cross outs out of the way. I can use this equation to find A or this one now that I have B. Uh, so if I use that first equation, I'll get B equals, I'm sorry, to find A is what I meant to say. I should get A equals 2 over B to the ninth. But if I use the second equation, I should also say that A equals 7 over B cubed. Either one of those should, should work. I don't have to do both, but I'm going to just as sort of a means of, of checking. So let me move that down to the bottom, and let's proceed. Uh, move that down on the screen. All right, let me bring back up the calculator. And I'll say uh, 2 divided by 9, oops, excuse me, b, alpha b, to the ninth power. That should be my a value, but I'm going to just double check. I'm going to also do the 7 divided by alpha b uh, cubed. And I got the same thing as I expected. That's my A value. So let's stow that, the STO button, right above the ON button. Stow that as A. And on paper, we'll write that value. On paper, we'll say, again, find a model of what I expect to see from you, the student. 13 point, let's see, I guess that rounds off to 0.10. And we'll put our final equation, what we think is our final equation, y equals A times b to the x power. That's what should be our final result. But I just want to check it, just to be sure. And I ask you get in the same habit. So it's very easy to do at this point, since I've already stowed these as a and b. 
I'm going to go to, uh, go to my y equals and I'm going to graph alpha a times alpha b to the x power. And the calculator is stowing all those significant figures that it calculated. Uh, I'm going to use some window settings. Um, I've got them preset to something that I know will work well. And I'm going to see that sure enough, I got the decreasing function that I expected. And let's just double check. Um, we expected this to go through the points. Um, let me highlight the points. 3, 7, and 9, 2. So let's make absolutely sure that it does. Um, trace to 3, and sure enough, I get a y value of 7. Trace to 9, and sure enough, I get a y value of 2. So mission accomplished. There are some other observations I would like to make, but I'm going to try to keep the video from going any longer. I uh, hope that made sense. Here is your turn to try. So pause the video, please. Okay, I hope you've try tried those exercises. Let's see how you did. There are the solutions along with my reasonable sketches, and I'm going to further explain in class why I'm emphasizing the reasonable sketch so much. Um, but here are your solutions. If it didn't work out and you can't figure out what went wrong, please come on by.